We'll call this September meeting of the Williamson County Commission to order. Commissioner Williams will give the invocation and Commissioner Herbert will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Please join me in prayer. Uh, dear Lord, we, we come together today and we want to thank you for the service of our late Commissioner Bert Chalfont and ask that you keep uh, Bert and Betty Jane and their family and the Chalfont family in your, in your thoughts and, uh, and help them during this time of grieving. Um, with the recent anniversary of 9-11, uh, please continue to protect our nation, protect our military personnel that stand on that wall on our behalf. Uh, and then lastly, just guide our thoughts and actions tonight as leaders of the community. And in your son's name we pray. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time we will have roll call. Please press your present button. Has everyone been able to push their button? There we go. Do I say one? All right. We have 23 present, one absent. Without objection, at this time, we will move the appointment for Chairman and Chair Pro Tim forward on the agenda. Are there any objections? I don't see any objections. Commissioner Steve Smith. Uh, I wanted to take a minute to thank the County Commission for um, choosing me and allowing me to serve as Vice Chairman for the last several years. I've appreciated the opportunity, um, and uh, I enjoyed serving the commission. Uh, at this time, I've chosen not to put my name in for chair or vice chair uh, for the coming year. Um, I would like to nominate Brian Bethard as chair for the coming year. I'll read your name off and then let us know uh, which you vote for. Commissioner Aiello. Commissioner Bethard. <laughs> Commissioner Clifford. 
Commissioner Graves. Commissioner, Commissioner Guffey. Commissioner Bethard. Commissioner Herbert. Brian Bethard. Commissioner Bethard. Bethard. Commissioner Landrum. Commissioner Bethard. Commissioner Nathan. Commissioner Sanford. Commissioner Bethard. Reverend Smith. Mary Smith, I apologize. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> Commissioner Bethard. Commissioner, Commissioner Webb. Commissioner, Commissioner Williams. Commissioner so Commissioner Bethard has 15 votes. Commissioner Sturgeon with eight votes. Um, Commissioner Bethard has been elected chairperson of the Williamson County Commission for a one-year term. Congratulations, sir. ground and we sit in seats that uh, commissioners have sat in for over a hundred years and uh, that does not escape me as I sit in front of you now and uh, again I appreciate it the next order of business will be to elect a vice chair and I will open the floor for nominations at this time Proper motion from Commissioner Webb, proper second from Commissioner Aiello. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Seeing none. Oh, sorry. I would like to nominate Commissioner Bob Sturgeon. Proper motion for Commissioner Sturgeon for Ms. Smith. Any other nominations? Oh, that was the second? Who was the first? Yeah, we need a second. I'll second. And a Commissioner uh, Lawrence is seconded. Any other nominations from the floor? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Whitby, uh, please proceed with another roll call vote for vice chair. Commissioner Aiello. Commissioner Bethard, or Chairman Bethard, excuse me. Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Clifford. Commissioner Graves. Commissioner Guffey. Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Williams. Esther. Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Landrum. Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Lawrence. Commissioner Lennox. Surgeon. Mason. Williams. Commissioner Nathan. Commissioner Sanford. Sturgeon. Commissioner Mary Smith. Sturgeon. Commissioner Peace. Mr. Williams. Commissioner Presser. Sturgeon. Sturgeon. Commissioner Torres. Commissioner Tunnicliffe. 
Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Williams. And Commissioner Williams. Williams. So it's 16 for Commissioner Williams, seven for Commissioner Sturgeon. Congratulations, Commissioner Williams. Look forward to serving with you. Moving on, the agenda, the next item is approval of the minutes. I believe those were all in your packet. Uh, I will entertain a motion. Motion by Commissioner Smith, second by Commissioner Williams. Any questions on the agenda? I'm sorry, on the minutes. <laughs> Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, please uh, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no button. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. 19 yes, four abstain. Next up is citizens' communications. I believe we have one individual wishing to speak. Uh, I'll call out your name. You have three minutes. Uh, when you come to the podium, please announce your name, and then uh, you'll have three minutes to speak, and the person we have coming up is Miss Laura Turner. Good evening, commissioners. I stand up this evening on behalf of the ancient trees living in our county. The Tennessee Champion Tree Program was launched in the mid-70s to identify and catalog the largest native trees in Tennessee. The Tennessee Urban Forestry Council has definitions for ancient trees. A landmark tree is an established familiar feature of a community, part of the community's heritage, or planted to commem commemorate special events more than 50 years ago. A historic tree has been a direct witness to an historic event or cultural movement significant nationally or regionally confirmed to a date and time. The Osage Orange at the Carton Plantation witnessed the Battle of Franklin. A heritage tree is a fallen tree and a member of the landmark historic and heritage tree registry. A centuries old beloved white oak recently fell in Brentwood and should have been on the registry. The community is grieving its loss and its falling did make news in the Williamson Herald. Ruth is a witness tree in Arrington, endangered by the High Park Hill development. Forester James Moore stated on September 7th that Ruth is a chinkapin oak approximately 335 years old, five feet and six inches in diameter, and is not a hazard and is in good health. Ruth should be on the registry. Ruth should be protected from being killed for houses. Williamson County should have regulations in place regarding the protection and preservation of such magnificent and awe-inspiring trees living on land being developed. There are regulations for floodplains, hillsides. There should be regulations for champion trees. Trees sequester carbon, reduce energy usage, remove air pollutants, filter storm water, and cool hot city streets by providing shade and releasing water vapor. Unless you think I'm just respectfully requesting the county consider protections for ancient trees, I'm doing the same in the city of Franklin regarding a 150-year-old pecan tree in the St. Paul's side courtyard in jeopardy due to pending construction plans. I hope we can do something for these magnificent um, treasures on our landscapes. Thank you. Um, this time I'll also ask everyone to silence their cell phones and uh, remind everyone of that. Also, the mayor asked me to remind everyone that uh, we now enter the building through the southeast entrance as opposed to the, uh, the eastern entrance here. Uh, we can exit this entrance, but coming to the meeting, we'll all come through the doors at the southeast end of the hallway. Uh, communications and messages. Uh, mayor Rogers Anderson. Congratulations, Mr. Chairman, and tonight we have a couple of proclamations. The first one we have is for Constitutional Week. I will ask those people in the audience that have, that have come for this one, would they please join me here at the podium? Hello. Well. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. 
Whereas our founding fathers, in order to secure the blessings of liberty for themselves and their prosperity, ordained and established a constitution for the United States of America. And whereas it is the greatest importance that all citizens understand the provisions and the principles contained in the Constitution in order to effectively support preserve and defend it against all enemies. And whereas the independence guaranteed to American citizens, whether by birth or naturalization, should be celebrated by appropriate ceremonies and activities. It is by my signature that I am hereby proclaiming the week of September the 18th as Constitutional Week here in our county. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Commissioners. I am here tonight, and Cheryl is with me, Cheryl Mayor. She is a member of the Constitutional Week Committee. I am the chair of the Constitutional Week Committee. My name is Dolores Greenwald, and I am here to invite all of you and all of you in the audience to our Constitution Week kickoff, which is September the 18th, 1.30 to 3 o'clock, at the Williamson County Public Library. And this year we're doing it a little different. We're having a live history event. So you can bring the kids, grandkids, and they can interact with Betsy Ross, Dolly Madison, Thomas Jefferson, and others. And we can make puzzles and quizzes and snacks, and we're making uh, cards for veterans. Also, we're having a guest speaker Tuesday night at the library that will speak on the Constitution. And then we have one on Thursday night speaking on George Washington's farewell address. And I've had the opportunity to hear Dr. Tim Johnson that will be speaking Thursday, and he is marvelous. So thank you for your time, and I hope to see you at some of these events, if not at least Sunday. Thank you. <coughs> Chairman, I have another proclamation, if you'd allow me to read it into the records. And this one is pertaining to Voter Registration Day. Would those people that are associated with Voter Registration, Election Commission, please join me here at the podium. Whereas, Whereas the National Association of Secretary of State has declared the month of September as National Voter Registration Month and Tuesday, September the 20th, 2022, as National Voter Registration Day. It is important to remember the sacrifices of many Americans and the cause of suffrage and in their honor exercise our civic duty by participating in the electoral processes by voting. And whereas Ann Dallas Dudley helped lead the successful, successful effort to get the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution ratified nationwide and in her home state of Tennessee, and whereas on August the 18th, 1920, Tennessee became the 36th, 36th and final state needed to pass the amendment giving women the right to vote. And whereas among all 95 counties in Tennessee, the citizens of Williamson County have consistently ranked as the number one county in voter participation in four of the last five November general elections, including the highest percentage of turnout at 79.4% in the November 2020 presidential election. It is by my signature that I am proclaiming Tuesday, September the 20th, 2022, as Voter Registration Day. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mayor Anderson, uh, Mr. Chairman, and members. Uh, I do have several members of the Williamson County Election uh, Commission uh, present tonight. I wanted to just go ahead and for the benefit of the commission and the audience and those watching from home uh, to mention that annually at every high school, public and private and home school, we make our voter registration effort in the month of September. So over the next three weeks, we'll be 
uh, reaching out. I've already coordinated several uh, public high school visits uh, over the next three weeks, and we'll continue that with our uh, private and homeschool uh, students that are eligible to vote. And one other thing I just want to say in regards to our voter participation, um, I want to do a shout out to our poll officials. Um, our poll officials are very, very loyal to the process, and uh, they make an effort to serve, and they're not doing it for the money. So um, I want to want to shout out to them because they are on the front lines, and uh, they do a lot of the work uh, that makes all of us look good in the end. So I really, uh, I really would impart and admonish you all to thank them when you go and cast your ballot in the upcoming November 8th election because they need a big thank you every now and then. Thank you very much. At this point, we have a proclamation to be offered up by Commissioner Tom Tunnicliffe. For those of you who don't know, this is BJ, Betty Jane Chalfont, Bert's way better half. <laughs> I say that with love for sure. Um, we're lucky tonight to have a proclamation honoring Bert. Um, this has been a hard week for many of us. Um, hard time, it's been more than a week, hasn't it? Um, it's, been, it's been tough and it's, it's odd to sit here tonight and, and not have my buddy Bert sitting next to me. So we'll try and get through this. Williamson County Government, proclamation honoring the late county commissioner, Bert Chalfont, Jr. Mr. Bert Chalfont was born in Tennessee on June 13, 1936, and was a longtime resident of Williamson County. And whereas he honorably served his country in the United States Army, the United States Army Reserves, the United States National Guard, and the Tennessee State Guard. During his 33 years of military service, he earned two distinguished service medals, one meritorious service medal, a bronze star, among other medals. Bert retired Brigadier General for the Tennessee State Guard. Whereas Bert Chalfont served on the Board of Deacons at First Presbyterian Church in Nashville, he served as commander at the Brentwood American Legion Post 156. He served as charter president of Kiwanis Club of Franklin. He was charter president of Crime Stoppers of Williamson County. He served as president of the Sons of the Revolution, John Donaldson chapter, president of Andrew Crockett's Sons of the American Revolution, and a member of Sons of the Confederate Veterans. A descendant of Washington's army at Valley Forge and was a member of First Families of Tennessee and First Families of Williamson County, among many other activities. And whereas Bert was married to Betty Jane Brindley Cook on May 29, 1982, and Bert and Betty Jane are the parents of four children. Leonia Chalfont Sullins, married to Dan, Anna Eugenia Chalfont O'Neill, husband Scott, James Bradford Cook, and Jonathan Creighton Cook, married to Lynn Archer, and proudly wear the title of grandparents to 10 grandchildren. Amen. <laughs> um, Whereas Burt was appointed as a Williamson County Commissioner in January of 1986, a position he has consistently held since that time, and was recently reelected to serve as seventh district commissioner position, and recently took his oath of office for the 10th consecutive term prior to his passing on August 23rd, 2022. And whereas throughout his tenure, Burt Chalfont served with honor and distinction as he strived to uphold the county's quality of life attributes through his devotion to Williamson Medical Center as a treasurer. And now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners meeting in regular session this 12th day of September 2022 hereby present this proclamation of appreciation to the Chalfont family in honor of his 19 years of dedication. That's the wrong number. We didn't change that. How many years was that? 36, 36 years. We'll get that changed. Um, and this is, is signed um, in witness whereof uh, I have hereunto set my hand and 
caused the great seal of the County of Williamson to be affixed at Franklin this 12th day of September. It is signed by Rogers Anderson and myself, Tom Tunnicliffe, his counterpart in District 7. I have it framed for you. Oh, I've got that. So and then we'll present you with his name tag as well and the last photo oh, that was taken. Um, yes, I remember well. <laughs> you were there that day, I think. That's right. I've got a special text that was sent to me today that I'd like to read as well. Those of you know Judy Hayes and has been a long time supporter in Williamson County, of Williamson County. She could not make it tonight. Um, when I asked her if she could make it, she, she wrote me a little message. Um, Serving with him was a pleasure and much good for Williamson County and its citizens was accomplished during Bert's service. I extend my appreciation to the Board of Commission for this recognition to your fellow colleague. That was from Judy Hayes that came in today. Much she appreciated. Yes, ma'am. Would you like to say something? Tom, it's lovely. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mayor Anderson, Commissioner China Clift, and all other commissioners, on behalf of our family, I so very much thank you for your kind and thoughtful resolution and proclamation in honor of my beloved husband, Bert Chalfant. For those 36 years as county commissioner, he was devoted to Williamson County and 7th District Brentwood, our home. He attended pancake breakfasts, student art shows at Scales and Brentwood Middle School at the invitation of the student and walked in the 4th of July parades in River Oaks with all the children who rode their decorated bicycles and wagons, very much like a grandfather would do. How very much our family appreciates this esteemed proclamation and honorable tribute. Dr. Craig Farrell said that Bert was a powerful man and he was my strength and shield. To me, Bert was the epitome of everything good and honorable and dignified. And I am so thankful that I told him so because I loved him completely. He was a perfect Southern gentleman he had the ability to reason and discern an issue immediately. Bert was amazing to me because he was absolutely fearless. As they say about a strong and courageous military officer, he says, follow me into battle. There was nothing that he feared. He was not afraid of anything not rattlesnakes encountered at summer training camp in Georgia, not swimming across the Mississippi River, which he did when he worked on a towboat one summer, nor any of America's enemies firing at his heavy tank 5th platoon in northern Bavaria, Germany, near the Czechoslovakian border when he was a young second lieutenant Army commander. He certainly did not fear death or be afraid of death. He knew his Lord and Savior very well and knew in whom and what he believed. At his celebration of life service, I took Bert to the foot of the cross where he wanted to be. He is now in heaven blessed with Christ's words, welcome thou good and faithful servant. And he is enjoying his eternal homecoming. In departing the commission, he would say to you, be faithful stewards of the best interests of Williamson County. Williamson County, Tennessee is a very special place. Thank you.
we have one more proclamation, and that one will be presented by Mayor Rogers Anderson. Chairman, well, first of all, I have to make a comment on BJ's remarks, <clears throat> how, how great it is to have someone like that that you can speak those great things about. And uh, thank you very much, BJ. You have on your agenda page a special proclamation, recognition. That's all it's labeled. And because this individual probably would not have been here tonight if we had not labeled it that way. So at this time, I'm going to call upon the Honorable Judge Jim Martin if he would step up. And for his <clears throat> fellow people that are working with him on a daily basis, would you please join him up here? And the family. And any other judges that want to come up here. <laughs> Who knows, we may need parking tickets to go before you. <clears throat> So if you would allow me to read this secret and special proclamation that we have tonight, which you do not have copies. It's not that we don't trust you, we just know that it would leaked out. Whereas James G. Martin III was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee, before his family moved to Jackson, Mississippi, where he graduated in public high school in 1965. And whereas after high school, <clears throat> Judge Jim Martin graduated magna cum laude from Vanderbilt University with a Bachelor of Arts in Economics and a minor in Mathematics. And following college, Jim served in the United States Army where he earned the Bronze Star, two overseas bars, the Vietnam Service Medal, which many of you know I'm very proud of that myself, <clears throat> the Good Conduct Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, and the Vietnam Campaign Medal before being honorably discharged in 1971. And whereas he returned to Vanderbilt as a Patrick Wilson Scholar and graduated law school first in his class, having earned numerous awards of distinction. And whereas upon completion of law school, Judge Martin started his practice in the law office of McWilliams, Barry, and Oglesby in Franklin. And then he joined the firm of Ferris, Evans, and Warfield for 32 years. This law firm became Ferris, Warfield, and Candidate, and later merged into Stocks and Harbison, PLLC. And whereas <clears throat> Jim Martin serves as an assistant city attorney to the city of Franklin, and is the lead city attorney from 1976 to 1988. And in December 2008, Jim Martin was appointed by the governor of Tennessee to serve, serve as a circuit court judge in the 21st Judicial District, including Williamson County, and in 2010 was elected by the public to continue, continue serving in that position. And whereas for the past eight years, the Honorable Judge Jim Martin has presided over the 21st D District Recovery Court, actively helping to combat, combat addictions. And whereas Judge Martin retired from the bench and his service to the <coughs> citizens of Williamson County and to the 21st Judicial District on September the 1st to 2022. And whereas it is fitting and proper that his dedication to the <clears throat> oath of office, the circuit court, and the 21st District Recovery Court be acknowledged. Now, therefore, be it resolved as the mayor of Williamson County, I do hereby declare September 16th, 2022, as the Honorable Judge Jim Martin Day in Williamson County. And I encourage all citizens, all members of the Bar Association, Tennessee Bar Association, the Williamson County Bar Association, the American College of Trial Lawyers and the Tennessee John Marshall Chapter of Ends, of course, join me in appreciation to Judge Martin for his service to the 21st Judicial District in administering justice, fairness, equality, in an impartial manner to all users of the judicial system. Congratulations.
why Janice didn't cook dinner before I left. <laughs> she asked me how long I was going to be, and I told her I didn't know because Judge Johnson told me that I needed to be here tonight to address some issues, and I called Connie Martin to find out what our budget was and what our money was and what we needed so I could hopefully intelligently address those issues. I had no idea that this was coming, and, and I'm very grateful to all of you. I really am. Uh, Mayor Anderson, thank you so much. And let me just say that um, serving the, the court has been an incredible honor. Serving the recovery court has been a double incredible honor. The uh, successor to the recovery court is Judge Johnson, who's over here. She will make it a much bunch better place than I had when I left it. So I'm very proud of her and what she's doing to step up. And I thank you very much. And thank all of you very much as well. Thank you. Four great proclamations make us all proud. Moving on, we have reports of county offices. Mayor Rogers Anderson. I mean, it's not often that you hear an outgoing judge call Connie, you old rascal, when he sat down over there. So you're very deserving. Mr. Chairman, if I could, I would like to ask Phoebe Riley. Many of you have met, seen Phoebe here, but she is officially our in charge of the budget and the balancing of the books and overseeing all the financial ends of Williamson County. So Phoebe, if you would come up and give us a snapshot of the financial picture of Williamson County. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. I'd like to start, please. Um, in your packet, you will find a letter from the Crop Trailers Office. Um, if we could please enter this into the minutes. This is the letter um, from the Comp Trailers Office, and this is, is stating approval is it not? Sorry. Stating approval um, of the 2023 budget. You'll find a number of reports in your packet this evening. Um, you will see that you will have a month of June as well as a month of July. Since we didn't meet in August, those numbers were not finalized until obviously in between. Um, so I wanted to present to you this evening both months. You will find in your packet the budget report. It will show the year-to-date collections through 6-30-2022. That shows the revenues and the expenditures as well for those corresponding funds. You also see a profit and loss report for the Cool Springs Conference Center. For the month of June, our share of the profit received from the Conference Center was 29,256. We did incur a small loss in July. Our portion of that loss for July was 20,134,000. There is a report included in your packet that will show the history of the Conference Center. Um, it will illustrate these totals, which I just gave you for the months of June and July, and it will also demonstrate the profit and loss over the last several years, leading back even to 2008 or 2008, 2009. Moving forward in your packet, you will find the education impact report. You should have two, again, one for collections through the year of 630 2022 and one for the month of July. Collected through July will be a total collected to date through the month of July of $105,805,311, leaving the total available for allocation of $56 million $306,773. There is a breakdown. You can see what has been collected um, for prior years as well as through June 2022. And then again, the next report you will find for education impact fee will give you the breakdown of just that month of July.
Finally, if I may, I'd like to go over your privilege tax collections for the month. We have received a um, total of privilege tax, tax collections for the month of July of $785,123. This is slightly down from June. Uh, June we received a little over $819,000. Um, and when I say slightly, I mean there's only been a decrease of about $34,000 in those collections. Is there any questions? Next under the agenda, under reports of county offices. Oh, I'm sorry, Mayor. <laughs> One final comment. <clears throat> Back in um, 2017, late 2017, many of the county commissioners here took on the challenge of a new national um, epidemic that was occurring, and it finally reached the point in Williamson County, and the commission voted at that time to engage a legal firm in the opioid settlements and as we have traveled down that road over the last four and a half years, legal counsel, who has actually been a consultant to um, the state board in helping draft up and put those rules and percentages in place with how much money our county will be receiving over the next many years. So I had asked Jeff Mosley to give us an update, kind of give us a cursory trip down that road, how that money will be dividing, because it, as we are here tonight, the first settlement of that money is now coming in, and we'll have an opportunity to see how that money will play out in our county, throughout our county law, <clears throat> excuse me, law enforcement, as well as those people affected, if you don't mind. Mr. Chairman, if I could have Jeff to give an overview of that and thank him for his loyal service to the state of Tennessee working through us and keeping us apprised of all the things that were going on. Thank you very much. Um, the, uh, we have received a settlement um, with the big three distributors under the opioid um, litigation, which was uh, McKesson, um, Cardinal and uh, Ameris Amerisource Bergen, I believe, is the name. Um, in any case, those three distributors had a multi-billion dollar settlement with the litigants across the nation. Um, the settlements will be paid out over 18 years. The county will receive a portion of the local funds. The local funds are 15 percent of that settlement overall. The state will receive 15 percent of the monies that come to Tennessee and 70 percent will go to the Opioid Abatement Council. Of the monies that go to the Opioid Abatement Council, 35 percent has been set aside for direct block grants back to the local governments for remediation or abatement of the nuisance created by the opioid uh, epidemic. So for Williamson County, over the course of the settlement term, and this is only for these three distributors, um, does not include the Purdue Pharmacy, uh, Pharma um, settlement, and will not include some of the other settlements that will come be down the line, including um, Mallincroft and some other bankruptcies that have already been announced. But currently, Williamson County is scheduled to receive up to $4,290,000 over the 18 years when you combine both the block grants and the direct appropriations. The direct appropriations will be approximately $1.2 million, and the abatement council block grants will be in excess of $3 million. Um, we have received the first installment of the direct payment of $53,000, we will receive approximately uh, between 100 and 120,000 from the Opioid Abatement Council when they distribute their meeting later this month to finalize their rules. This will have to be used in accordance with the settlement documents. So 15% of the monies that Williamson County receives can be used for reimbursement of its prior costs and expenses either attributable to the opioid epidemic or in furtherance of some other uh, stated purposes or reimbursement of other costs. 70 or 85 percent has to be used for 
uh, prospective abatement of the nuisance, which can include a list of things listed in the settlement agreement, including behavioral health, opioid abatement, um, and some other expenditures for treatment or other health-related uh, expenses. We'll be going into more detail as to that. Those will have to come through the County Commission, both for receipt of those funds and appropriation of those funds as we go forward. Um, so right now, as I said, uh, we've got about $4.2 million that will be coming out over the 18 years. That will be added to as we get additional settlements, and we'll keep you up to date on those amounts. Um, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions about where we are, but this is the first stage. We should receive actually the second annual payment by the end of the year, so um, we'll, we'll have a few dollars to work with on the opioid issue. Any questions for legal counsel? Seeing none, Mr. Mayor. One more item. So late this afternoon, we got some very, very good news for you that live out in the unincorporated area of our county. And I would like, <clears throat> because, he is, because he has overseen this uh, through our ARPA fund money that we have been allocated and late this afternoon. And I should announce that Senator Jack Johnson, who who is here and present that we are finally glad to get that news from ECD late this afternoon. Paul? How are we doing now? There we go. No, she's got me. All right. Uh, this came through the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development. Uh, the commissioner this afternoon, along with the governor, announced grants. And of the grants, United Telecommunications received a grant, which will um, enable them to provide broadband for 3,206 Williamson County locations. And you can see that on the, the more detail is on either United it's a website where they have it or on the Tennessee uh, Department of Economic Community Development. But here's the point that people are more interested in. Uh, we've agreed to fund up to $3.7 million of this, which this body has already passed. Uh, they are saying that in Williamson County they should be starting to install this uh, broadband to these 3,206 locations sometime in early 2023 in Williamson County. So we'll be on the front end of that. Uh, but not to belabor it, there's lots of information on the website, both with United and with uh, Economic Development. And if you want to know, if you're in that area, in the College Grove, probably in the first, uh, second, third district primarily, maybe some in the fifth, um, you can go to United's website or the Tennessee Economic Development website and put your address in, and they'll tell you if you're one of the, in one of the areas. Uh, it's very user friendly and you can can do that and, and find out and then of course you can contact me if you have any questions I'll be glad to help you out mayor we have a question from Commissioner Smith go ahead <laughs> um, counselor what with these monies coming in, um, is the is the procedure similar to, let's say, the the ARPA money in terms of sequestration and record keeping, and are are we set up to take care of that? process and I'm working with Phoebe, um, we will need to segregate the accounts particularly for the prospective abatement purposes where we've got to be able to account for that 85 percent. The 15 percent will be a little broader use but we'll have two separate uh, accounts that we'll draw from on that so that we can uh, attribute that back to the appropriate funds. But yes, they will have to be segregated. They will not go into the general fund per se. They would not be uh, unrestricted from funds for the commission to utilize. Any other questions for the mayor or for council? Yes. Ah, Commissioner Williams. It's okay to ask a follow-up question to Commissioner Webb. Um, any, any indication, you said 3,206 locations, any indication what the process of choosing those locations was?
grant requests where they identify the areas based on the FCC maps. And, and literally this came in at about four o'clock this afternoon. So I haven't been able to drill down and look at that yet. So we'll be starting that tomorrow. Other questions? I see none. Thank you, Mayor. Next on the agenda is a report from Williamson County Schools. Superintendent Golden. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Commissioners. I have a few items uh, to mention to you. First, uh, I feel compelled to speak to uh, Mr. Chalfant's passing. I think back 10 or 12 years ago, uh, we were in the Campbell Center having a conversation. If you know Brentwood High School, from a few years ago about theaters. And he was a very thoughtful commissioner and I know you all know that too. And uh, just, I, I felt compelled to say that I'll miss him. Um, second, uh, there was a discussion about Constitution Week. In schools we know of Constitution Day, which is September 17th of every year. Uh, we celebrate that with our students. And um, I pulled up our scope and sequence, which represents our standards for our students. In first quarter kindergarten, our social studies standards state that students will learn the foundations of good citizenship, including civic responsibilities and patriotism through the rules by which they live. And teachers are to honor the U.S. Constitution and recognize its significance and purpose. First quarter kindergarten. It's very important to us, so I appreciate you all acknowledging that as well. Uh, third, I wanted to mention that the state released today uh, the reward schools uh, across the state, and they also gave designations for county and city school districts across the state, including special school districts. Uh, Williamson County was named an exemplary school district. I spoke to you all a month or two ago about the release of the actual data. Uh, so that doesn't surprise us. But we have 29 of our schools this year named reward schools. That is based largely on achievement and growth for students. There are a couple at the high school level, other smaller issues that they factor that in on. That's our highest ever. Uh, we continue to do incredible, incredible things that uh, it, I'm just so proud of our teachers and our students. So we'll be celebrating that over the next few weeks with those reward schools. At the same time, we're talking to our principals about the data and where they can continue to grow. So we thank your, you for your support of the work we do and for the school board as well. Uh, as of last week, we had 42,288 students. That's the highest ever. We're about 300 or so students short on our projections uh, for the year. I've mentioned this over the years. We don't add teacher positions unless we need them. Uh, so right now we're staffed at about 98.5% of teachers. Uh, and you all know, of course, also, we don't take items, uh, we, don't, we don't spend funds out of designated fund balance without approval from both the, uh, the um, school board and you. We have four items for you this month. Three of those four are proposed to be out of fund balance rather than an intent to fund. And if you have any questions about those, I'm certainly uh, open to hearing your questions. Questions for Superintendent Golden. Thank you. Next up is the hospital report, Mr. Mazuka. So just a quick project update. We've erected our new uh, ambulance canopy and we'll begin paving uh, at that canopy this week. We have a state inspection uh, that's going to come up in about a week and a half before we can open it. So we'll open that canopy at the end of the month. Once that canopy is open, we'll tear down the old canopy. 
The steel for the emergency department expansion is being erected. Uh, we expect drying completion by November 1st. We anticipate we'll occupy the expanded ER space by May of 2023. And then we'll go back in and renovate the existing space uh, over the next year. I think really important is to remember that we're increasing our adult ED capacity from 28 beds to 43 beds, which includes a really important part of opening an eight bed secure unit uh, for treating behavioral health patients. It'll keep our patients safer and our, our, our staff safer once that's completed. As it relates to the West Tower expansion, construction has begun on the current second floor shell space, which will house our new postpartum area. And that's gonna be completed the, the postpartum area uh, May of 2023. We'll begin the foundation for the North Wing expansion at the end of the month with steel erection for the West Tower happening a couple of days after Christmas on December 27th. That process for the steel will take uh, until May 15th when we'll have steel top out and dry in of that area expected by July of 23. Uh, our West Project Go Live date is still May of 2024. And as you remember, the West Tower project will house 72 uh, new med surge beds, 35 new ICU beds, 22 new observation beds. It'll also have an additional uh, NICU, uh, NICU bed as well as a C section, additional C-section room. And then we'll also have a dedicated cardiac center with two cardiac cath labs and a new electrophysiology suite uh, in that uh, West Tower. Uh, really quick, uh, to give you an EMS update, uh, from April through August, we uh, provided over 1,450 hours of EMS time to events like the Frank Franklin Main Street Festival, the Renaissance Festival, Franklin Rodeo, and the Williamson County Fair. We started covering high school football games again, and we have other significant events coming up like the pilgrimage. Uh, we have one of our new EMS vehicles outside for you guys to see as well as our new uh, mass casualty bus. Hopefully we'll never have to use that. That was a bus that came from the Williamson County school system and it was renovated. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll have that, hopefully never have to use it in case of mass casualty. With that, uh, I'll turn it over to Mike for the financial report, then we'd be willing to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Phil. Good evening, as Phil said, I'm Mike Genesee. I'm the CFO of the hospital. Uh, you all have the financial package in front of you. I'll just go over the highlights on the, the page. Uh, from a statistic standpoint, you can see we had almost 800 admissions from, a, from the adult standpoint. Uh, we had 30 uh, pediatric admissions. We had about 3,000 patient days, uh, about 9,900 equivalent patient days. That's an, uh, adjusted for outpatients. We did uh, almost 860 surgeries, and we had almost 3,500 ER visits. Uh, for the month, we generated almost uh, a little bit less than 25 million in net revenue. Uh, a little about 25 million in OPEX, and we uh, actually netted out about $200,000 in net income. Uh, you can see that we collected a little over $22 million. It looks like we collected a little bit less than we did the month before, and that's because we had fewer collection days. In July, uh, we had 20 in June. We had a record month. Uh, we had 21 collection days, but we had five Wednesdays and Thursdays, and that, that's really significant to us. We collected about $3 million on those two days. So. Uh, with that, and we paid back to uh, the CMS, the, the Medicare Advance, we paid back uh, a little bit less than $2 million this month. So that's where you can see the decrease in the cash. Um, but other than that, you know, we're, we're still challenged with uh, staffing, but I think we had a pretty good month for us. So. Questions for Mr. Mazuka or the CFO? <coughs> Seeing none, thank you. Next, under other committees, um, I believe uh, Commissioner Paul Webb has a report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, tonight, um, we've got a new addition to the county staff, and so I am proud to announce the addition. This is with the Williamson County Public Library. We have a new director. You met the former directors a while ago with the Constitution Week, Dolores Greenwald. And uh, but before I introduce the new director, I'd like for our uh, board members that are present tonight to stand up and let me recognize them. All right, so you'll see Janine Moore. Uh, you see Terry Hood, our chair, uh, uh, Janan Merrill, 
and let's see, two or three others that said they would be here. Well, there was a wreck on 96, so that would have caused a problem. So what I'd like to do is uh, introduce our new director. The board members are Amy Baggett, Rich Moody, Denise Carruthers, Dolores Bratton, Gary Samuski. I hope I pronounced Gary's right. Thank you. And um, that board appointed a nominating committee, which searched nationwide, had numerous candidates, even in this environment, we had numerous candidates from around the country. And we found someone from the state of Florida. I'd like to introduce our new library director. Let her introduce herself, Jessica Jeffords. Jessica, would you come up forward, please? everyone. I'm very excited to be here and living in Williamson County and even more excited to increase the visibility of our library system in the county. So I look forward to working with all of you and getting to know you. Thank you. And I have library cards for all the new commissioners. Who needs a library card? Yeah. Got it, right? so we have <laughs> them. Paul has them. Right, right here. Thank you. And while Commissioner Webb finishes handing out those library cards, I believe we have a report from Parks and Rec, uh, Director Gordon Hampton. Thank you and congratulations, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome all of the new commissioners. Uh, congratulations on your election to this fine body of folks here. Uh, I am Gordon Hampton. I'm the Director of Parks and Recreation, and I'd like to just take a minute to uh, let you know about something that we're doing that's very important to the department, and I think it'll be of interest, and I think it should be very important to each one of you and your constituency. Um, last week, we sent an email out to the, uh, all the elected officials in the county and the municipalities talking about our master plan. Uh, this body approved our master plan a year ago that was part of our capital budget and we're deep into that process. Uh, we've now reached the stage where we are seeking out the community input that is necessary for us to get a well-rounded plan. You'll see uh, I gave you two things today. First of all, I gave you each our fall newsletter. Uh, you new commissioners will get one of these every time we put one out. Uh, this is for your information just to see what our Parks and Recreation Department's up to each month and gives you a uh, snapshot, as the mayor likes to refer to things, of what we're doing and the people we're serving. Also, I slid into each one of these. Tom, did you get one? Okay, thank you. Um, I slid into each one of these uh, just a piece of information about the master plan. This is very important, and I want to encourage all of you to help us with this. This is something I think you need to share with your constituents. This is an opportunity for you to allow them to give you some feedback that you might be seeking to find out how they feel about the recreational opportunities available to them in Williamson County. I think it's very important that this county has a quality school system, a quality library, a quality hospital, quality EMS, and EMA. This is another part of that quality of life, Parks and Rec. We have over 67,000 unique account holders that do business with Parks and Recreation on an annual basis. Those account holders could have as many as four or five people in a family. When you put all those together, we're talking over 100,000 participants in Parks and Recreation programs in Williamson County. I think they would be interested to know that they have an opportunity to participate in this exercise. The way that they can exercise, I mean participate in this, is there is a QR code and there's also a, a link to the email that I sent you last week. I would ask each one of you if you have any type of a database to send this out to your constituents. Uh, if they participate in by taking the online survey, it's a survey performed by uh, uh, what's called SurveyMonkey, it goes directly into uh, the information that we're being that's being collected so that we can get the uh, this important piece of the uh, master plan in hand 
So once again, I just want to ask you all to take part in this, ask your constituents to uh, participate in it. And then once we get it, of course, I will share the uh, final results of the master plan with each and every one of you. Also, before I step away and have this opportunity, I'd like to let you also know that we are this coming Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. This is the sixth edition of Shakespeare in the Park. Uh, it is at uh, Academy Park. This is the same Shakespeare in the Park that's been going on for over 40 years in Nashville. And they brought this down here to us several years ago, thanks to the mayor's help and uh, people from the community. This is a free event. And I would encourage all of you to uh, let people know about it. We would love to see you there. The weather is supposed to be beautiful. So that's what we have going on at Parks and Rec. Thank you. And uh, once again, appreciate your participation in this. Questions for Mr. Hampton? Seeing none, thank you. Any other committees wishing to report at this time? Moving on to elections and appointments. Uh, this is the time of year that we set up our various committees and the first ones on the agenda are the committees that uh, the mayor has submitted names uh, for our consideration. We will start with the budget committee, uh, then we'll go to purchasing and insurance. Both of these will be voice votes. Uh, all of these committees will be voted on by voice votes. Under the budget committee, we have Judy Herbert as the chairman. Uh, Commissioner Megan Guffey, Commissioner Aaron Nations, Commissioner Matt Williams, and then, of course, Mayor Rogers Anderson. I'll entertain a motion. Second. Smith and Jones. Motion made by Smith, second made by Jones. Any questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? We have our budget committee. Moving on to purchasing and insurance. Uh, the mayor has selected commissioners Brian Clifford, David Landrum, Tom Tunnicliffe, Paul Webb, and then Mayor Rogers Anderson. I'll entertain a motion. Motion made by Ricky Jones, seconded by Judy Herbert. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? We have our purchasing and insurance committee. Next on the agenda is... Uh, a four-year term for the Planning Commission, uh, term expiring Beth Lothers, nomination Brian Clifford. I'll entertain a motion. Motion made by Smith. Second. Second made by Commissioner Lawrence. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Commissioner Clifford. Stormwater and Appeals Board, a four-year term, term expiring Betsy, Betsy Hester, Commissioner Betsy Hester, nomination Commissioner Betsy Hester. I'll entertain a motion. Commissioner Ricky Jones makes the motion. Commissioner Judy Herbert seconds. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Commissioner Hester. Now we move to the rotating committees. Um, we will here in a moment take a brief recess. So let me first kind of explain how this goes and have Diane probably help me explain how it goes. We will break into pairs, um, pairs of districts. Districts one and two will get together and they will uh, nominate a spokesperson. Districts three and four will get together and do the same, followed by districts five and six, districts seven and eight, districts nine and 10, and districts 11 and 12. Uh, we'll take 15 minutes so that you can select a committee uh, person uh, for each of the four rotating committees. And then when we reconvene, uh, we'll have the spokesperson uh, nominated by each pairing uh, to tell us who has been selected for each committee. So with that, we'll take a brief 15-minute recess.
if everybody has no. <laughs> if everybody is uh, wrapping up or about to wrap up, we'll return to their seats and we'll reconvene this September 12th commissioner meeting. Didn't work hardly. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> All right, the way this will work is I'll read out uh, each committee uh, in the order I have them here. I'll call out each district pairing, and whoever you have selected uh, to represent you to give the names for each committee will uh, deliver those names, and then we'll then, we'll then voice vote on each committee. Uh, so the first one I have is Rules Committee. I'll start off with Districts 1 and 2. Districts 3 and 4. Districts 5 and 6. Paul Districts 7 and 8. Drew Torres. Districts 9 and 10. I'm sorry, it's Rules Committee. Ah, uh, yeah. And then Commissioners, or I'm sorry, District 11 and 12. Okay, for the Rules Committee, I have Commissioner Betsy Hester, Commissioner Jennifer Mason, Commissioner Paul Webb, Commissioner Drew Torres, Commissioner Megan Guffey, Commissioner Brian Bethard. I'll entertain a motion. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Smith. And Jones. Second made by Commissioner Jones. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have our Rules Committee. We're now going to Steering Committee. On the steering committee, uh, who have you selected? Districts 1 and 2? Jones. Districts 3 and 4? Districts 5 and 6? Aaron Nation. Districts 7 and 8? Tom Sonicliffe. Districts 9 and 10? Matt Williams. And Districts 11 and 12? Mr. Aiello. For the steering committee, we have Commissioners Ricky Jones, Greg Lawrence, Aaron Nations, Tom Tunnicliffe, Matt Williams, Sean Iola. Entertain a motion. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Smith, seconded by Commissioner Lawrence. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? We have our steering committee. Next committee is Human Resources Committee. Districts 1 and 2. Lisa Lennox. Districts 3 and 4. Jeffrey. Districts 5 and 6. Districts 7 and 8? To be determined. Vacant. Vacant. Districts 9 and 10? Jasmine. And districts 11 and 12? Okay, I'll read out the Human Resources Committee. We have Commissioners Lisa Hayes Lennox, Jeffrey Graves, Mary Smith, uh, a vacancy that will be filled at a later date, Chaz Morton, and Steve Smith. I'll entertain a motion. Second. Motion made by Williams, seconded by Guffey. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? We have our Human Resources Committee. And then the last committee is Parks and Rec. Districts 1 and 2. Judy Districts 3 and 4. Pete Districts 5 and 6. Districts 7 and 8. Park Sturgeon. Districts 9 and 10. David and Districts 11 and 12. Brian so I have for Parks and Rec, Commissioners Judy Herbert, Pete Stresser, Greg Sanford, Barb Sturgeon, David Landrum, and Brian Clifford. Entertain a motion. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Guffey, seconded by Williams. Commissioner Williams. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? And we have our Parks and Rec Committee and all of our rotating committees. Mr. Chairman, would you announce that the steering committee will be called uh, in the next couple of weeks and, and I'll let everyone know um, so that they can make Do you want to announce it? Request. Either way. 
steering committee, uh, Diane has an announcement to make to those of you who have been elected uh, to the steering committee. Just wanted to remind everyone that um, we will be send, setting up the steering committee uh, in the next week or so, and uh, I will notify all county commissioners so that if you have a committee request, you will have a county commissioner um, list of those on the steering committee so you can make your committee request known to members of the committee, or you can notify our office and then we'll put together a spreadsheet for the members of the steering committee. Those recommendations will be brought back on the October agenda for your approval, and then the new committees will begin meeting after the October meeting. A question from Jennifer Mason. Will you be sending out also a list of the committees and the dates and times they meet so people can kind of base their selection on their Yes, ma'am. Everybody hear that question okay? Any other questions? All right, moving on to item nine on the agenda, the consent agenda. This should have been in everyone's packet. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Smith. Commissioner Smith made the motion. Commissioner Smith made the second. Any questions or comments on the consent agenda? So we need to look up here. Yeah. Um, Question from Commissioner Herbert. Question about the letter we got from Kingston Springs about wanting us to incorporate some a road into the Williamson County Highway. Does anybody know anything about that? Is Eddie already gone. Bobby Cook to explain that. The resolution you received from them, it, it shouldn't have been in your packet this time. You're not going to be taking any action on that road until October. It had to go to the Planning Commission, and then it'll come back next month. But we're just going to be accepting the road into the county road system. Saving it? Or just we'll, we'll maintain it. Packet. We'll take action on that in October after it goes through the proper committees. Any other questions concerning the consent agenda? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Commissioner Lawrence? No, it's okay. Okay, record the vote, Mr. Whidbey. 23 yes, zero no. Consent agenda passes. We have no unfinished business. Uh, under new business, we have no zoning matters to take up this month, so we'll move right on to appropriations. First resolution, 922-1, resolution amending the 22-23 general purpose school budget by $282,000 for additional construction costs related to the addition at Summit High School. And we'll press the buttons for these for the motions in the second. So I have a motion made by Ricky Jones and a second by uh, Commissioner Matt Williams. The school board voted 940 against, education 540 against, budget 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, these are a, a couple of cleanup items in the summit uh, project. Any questions? And Diane wants me to remind everyone to speak into their mics. Sorry. With no questions, are we ready to vote? All those in favor signify, signify by pressing your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. 
Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. 20 yes, 3 abstain. Resolution 922-2, resolution amending the 22-23 general purpose school budget by $4 million for new construction of elementary school at Cox Road. We have a motion from Tom Tunnicliffe, a second from Ricky Jones. School board was nine in favor, zero against. Education, five, four, zero against as amended. Budget committee, four, four, zero against as amended. Explanation, please, Commissioner Smith. project uh, will wind up being a total of forty million four hundred thousand um, dollars there were some requests from the school system and also the Planning Commission requested some off-site improvements which uh, which that was the amendment to not fund the two million one hundred fifty thousand of offsite improvements at the current time that leaves the the balance of the uh, resolution as amended to one million eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars uh, oh, yes I would like to make a amendment to this resolution of reducing this resolution by two million one hundred and fifty thousand dollars second herbert any questions on the amendment not the resolution itself but on the amendment seeing none are we ready to vote on the amendment it is loaded so you're voting on the amendment if you approve the amendment you'll press your yes button if you're against it you'll press your no button Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. Yes, three abstain. Amendment passes. Now we're on to the full resolution as amended. Any questions on the full resolution as amended? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. If you're opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. Yes, three abstain. Passes. Resolution 922-3, resolution of the Williamson County Board of County Commissioners approval of an intent to fund of $26,500,000 for the phase four replacement of Page High. Motion made by Tom Tunnicliffe, seconded by Commissioner Ricky Jones. School board 940 against, education 540 against, budget committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is an intent to fund that we were Any questions on this resolution? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. Yes, three abstain. Passes. Resolution 922-4, resolution amending the 22-23 general purpose school budget by $264,562 for additional human resources and payroll positions. Motion made by Commissioner Smith, seconded by Commissioner Tom Tunnicliffe. School board 940 against, education 540 against, budget committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is 
payroll positions um, and there's a there's an investigator position in there as well um, so in the in the current job market and with the growth that we've that we've had um, there was a, a need for these additional positions and if anyone has a question uh, director golden is in the uh, in the audience Question from Commissioner Sturgeon. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I know this came up in Budget Committee uh, and that this investigator is to do Title IX. Is that right, Jason? Title IX investigations? And I remember the words were unfunded federal mandate, right? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, for the question. Uh, the increase in Title IX investigations has been about eightfold from single digits to in the 70s uh, now. And uh, it's because of changes in the process the federal government requires for Title IX investigations. Yes, ma'am. Federal government. Less than 2% of our total budget comes from the federal government. Oh, uh, well, let's see. So um, I'm going to look over to my left for uh, for Ms. Farmer. Estimate of federal funding for our total budget in actuals: four million, somewhere around four million dollars annually. Four million dollars. What what's stopping us from just saying no? We have an obligation under federal rules. We don't have the luxury of not following the federal law. Um, multiple lawsuits and end up costing us more, potentially. Yes, ma'am. Question from Commissioner Stresser. Well, it was actually about the investigator, too. I saw that, and it seemed like a very unusual title for uh, a school position. So our Human Resources Department, um, I don't know that we will actually have that particular title in our, in our PCR, but we wanted to make sure you all knew the main function of the job. Um, we have complaints. We serve 42,000 students, have a little over 4,000 employees, uh, and so we have an obligation to investigate allegations. Uh, and Title IX is the one that has largely exploded, you know, bloomed, blossomed uh, since we since we did our budget. Can you give us some examples of what kind of top issues are when you have these these problems? So, so Title IX, if there's a claim that someone um, harassed on the basis of sex, that is the, the typical Title IX investigation. Folks traditionally think of Title IX as sports um, access to programs, but the Title IX actually says you cannot discriminate in 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 uh, government programs on the basis of sex so most of them are allegations against peers yes sir oh. i'm sorry mary smith you're right i'm gonna have to get that right yeah <laughs> Yeah, so I was just um, curious. So are these unfunded federal mandates, like what is the dollar cost to our school system based on the $4 million that we get? How much are we spending on these types of mandates? Well, um, I don't know that I can answer that as I stand here today for total. Um, largely the federal funding that we receive is related to special education. So we, we traditionally will fund some of our uh, special education teachers assistant positions that are that are required due to in individualized education plans out of the federal funding um, we could try to get an estimate on that but as I stand here I don't know um, we often speak of that the state might pass a rule that ends up triggering additional expense that might not have been anticipated at the county level um, likewise that happens with the federal government but I don't have any any aggregate numbers as I stand here I'm just guessing that there's probably some of those positions you need anyway, regardless of the mandate, some of them that actually do provide services to the students. That is, that is correct. And we, we, our special education budget is much more than that $4 million funded by the federal government. But yes, you're correct. Any, any idea why the uptick in the Title IX? Um, 
the requirements for a formal investigation based on the based on the complaints are new so some investigations that might have been a school administrator uh, investigation if there's a quick complaint now require a much more formal process uh, so our HR department actually formally investigates so that's that's the product of some changes in the federal regulations Thank you. yes ma'am Too much in the weeds, but um, I'm assuming this person would have an extensive employee relations background, so they can do proper investigations. In yes, Title. yes, ma'am. Um, uh, we will make sure that when we hire, we have that. And of course, there's ongoing professional development as well uh, for members of that department. Well, I would never want to underfund HR, seeing as how that was my career choice. So I think you could never have enough good HR. Good job. I'm happy about that. Question from Commissioner Torres. Um, Director Golden, is there an opportunity to take any current positions and reallocate for this? Yeah, we discussed that. Uh, actually, what we have found is that that um, we've been pretty skeletonized with that department. Uh, when when we combine the the mobility of the market this year. Uh, with that additional demand, we determined we needed it. It's quite unusual for us to ask for these kinds of positions in the middle of a budget year. You all might hear from us with teachers if we've gone over numbers sometime in the middle of the year and have to hire new teachers. But we did a pretty deep analysis of that. Um, as a quick example of some data, uh, we've hired a, about 610 teachers as of last week for this coming year. And uh, in the past, the most we'd ever hired in one year was in the low 400s. So the market has gotten much more mobile, and so the recruiting's much, the, the demand is much higher. We felt like we couldn't wait um, until next budget year for that because the demands are going to come this spring for, for recruiting and be, and be more ongoing. Golden, I know you told Commissioner Smith that <clears throat> you didn't have an exact number, and that's fine. Is it millions of dollars we have to spend because we're taking $4 million from the federal government? So when we talk about unfunded mandates, we can't refuse the federal funding and not be subject to the federal law. So to answer your question, no to your question. I have a suspicion if we dug into the budget, it would probably be in seven plus figures if we analyzed all the federal requirements in our positions and, and expenses related to that, but it's not a choice of one or the other. The requirements are there and we received some funding and it's not through the, you know, through the, through a quid pro quo commerce clause kind of structure for our funding. So <clears throat> if you didn't take the $4 million, if that's the number, <clears throat> if you didn't take that at all, you can't do away with these other positions? Gotcha. Thank you. Commissioner Cunnicrit. I move the previous question. Second. We have a, uh, a motion to call the question. Do I hear a second? Second. And this uh, proper motion, a proper second, this it's requires, and it's not debatable. Uh, <coughs> mm -hmm. All the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We've called the question. So now we're on to voting. If you support this resolution, press your yes button. If you oppose it, press your no button. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. Yes, to abstain. Resolution 922-5, resolution authorizing contracts for professional services 
for an assessment study of the regulations governing on-site sewage disposal systems and related office operations for Williamson County and appropriating and amending the 22-23 County Mayor's budget by $150,000, revenues to come from unincorporated county general funds. I have a motion from Commissioner Smith, a second from Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Is that all right? Okay. Uh, Board of Health, seven in favor, zero against. Budget Committee, four in favor, zero against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Herbert. Resolution is to fund a consultant to study the regulations and one, one to study the regulations and another consultant to study the office procedures for the septic department due to the amount of time and the cost of getting septic approved. This is something that was brought up earlier in the year and the mayor has agreed to do this. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, press your no button. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. Yes, one abstain. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-6, resolution appropriating and amending the 22-23 juvenile services budget by $1,087.58. Revenues to come from prior year state grant fund balance. Proper motion from Jennifer Mason. Proper second from Commissioner Greg Sanford. Law enforcement, public safety, 540 against. Budget committee, 440 against. Expl explanation, please, Commissioner Mason. Thank you. This was a $3,000 grant awarded to Juvenile Court Services. This is the balance of unspent money that we are rolling over into the new fiscal year. Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whitby. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution 922-7, resolution appropriating and amending the 22-23 Williamson County General Sessions DUI court budget by $98,778.03. Revenues to come from unappropriated county general fund balance. Motion from Jennifer Mason, second from Greg Sanford. Law enforcement, 540 against. Budget committee, 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Mason. Thank you. This is unused donated funding from the previous year that we are rolling over to in order to have access to it in this budget cycle. Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, press your no button. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whitby. 23 yes, zero no. Passes. Resolution 922-8. Resolution appropriating and amending the 22-23 Williamson County General Sessions DUI court budget by $150,904.81 for the DUI court substance abuse and mental health services grant Revenues to come from rollover federal grant funds. Motion from Commissioner Mason, second from Commissioner Guffey. Law enforcement, public safety, 5-4-0 against. Budget committee, 4-4-0 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Mason. Thank you. This is unused grant money that is being rolled over into the current fiscal year. Any questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no button. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whitby. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-9, resolution appropriating and amending the 22-23 Williamson County General Sessions DUI court budget by $400,000 for the DUI court substance abuse and mental health services grant. Revenues to come from federal grant funds. Proper motion from Commissioner Mason. Proper second from Commissioner Guffey. Law enforcement, public safety, 540 against. Budget committee, 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Mason. Thank you. This is to accept a grant in the amount of $400,000 for the DUI court to utilize. 
Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. 23 yes, zero no. Passes. Resolution 922-10, resolution appropriating $38,026.66 to the 21st District Recovery Court, revenues to come from DUI fines. Motion from Commissioner Mason, second from Commissioner Nations. Law Enforcement Public Safety, 540 against. Budget Committee, 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Mason. Everyone who is convicted of a DUI in Williamson County pays court costs. Part of that court cost is earmarked for the recovery court. This is simply asking that that earmarked collected fine money be rolled over into the operating budget for the 21st District Recovery Court. Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-11, resolution appropriating $43,383.95 to the 21st District Recovery Court, revenues to come from dedicated account. Motion from Commissioner Mason, second by Commissioner Nations. Law Enforcement Public Safety 540 against. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Mason. Thank you. Individuals convicted in Williamson County of certain drug offenses are ordered to pay fees that are then earmarked for the use of the 21st Recovery Court program. We're asking that the fees be released to the Recovery Court program for their operating expenses. Questions? I believe we have a question from Commissioner Herbert. Is that right? Mm -hmm. How how are y'all handling that money at this point? Or should I even ask? Well, that is a question I'm not able to answer because I do not know the answer. That may be more of a, a legal question. I, I don't know the status there were previously talks about incorporating Lewis, Perry, and Hickman, but I don't know anything other than that and how that's working. The, the newly formed 32nd District does not have a recovery court, um, and there are draft proposals right now for the 21st to continue providing services um, to them as they may not otherwise be available and uh, providing services to those um, in those counties may help the recovery court with other funding requests but right now the 32nd doesn't have a recovery court the 21st has agreed to continue providing services to those individuals absolutely will the 30 seconds contribution be participation or providing participants only, or will there be a financial component? Will they help fund the program through their fine collections, et cetera, as well? To date, they, those counties have not all approved the fee collection that Williamson County approved. If they approve that, then it would go to the participant cost. trying to get those counties to um, to enact but it requires a county enactment of those they're authorized by state statute but the county commission has to approve them in those particular counties in order to do that um, to date they have not done that they now have a judge committed to their circuit they were part of the circuit before judge spitzer um, has vocalized support for the program and for seeking those sources but until there's commission acting there's nothing to go to go get and the the short answer i guess is that they are providing no financial assistance to the program is that right the participants themselves do pay certain costs and fees into the program but the governmental entities down there don't provide any and they've not authorized the funds we don't provide tax dollars these are fees collected through the system. We need to get that authorized down there as well. 
But the agreement with the 32nd isn't contingent upon them collecting those funds. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please. Mr. Whidbey? 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-12, resolution appropriating and amending the 2223 Veterans Treatment Court budget by $45,000. Revenues to come from Veterans Treatment Court Reserve. Motion from Commissioner Mason, seconded by Commissioner Nations. Law Enforcement Public Safety, 540 against. Budget Committee, 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Mason. Thank you. This is a budget amendment just to reallocate how the Veterans Court will be um, utilizing the $45,000 within their budget. Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no button. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-13, resolution appropriating and amending the 2223 Williamson County General Session Veterans Treatment Court budget by $411,945.77 for the Department of Justice Assistance Grant. Revenues to come from rollover federal grant funds. Proper motion from Commissioner Mason, proper second from Commissioner Herbert. Law Enforcement Public Safety, 540 against. Budget Committee, 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Mason. Thank you. This is a rollover from grants or a grant that we received in the amount of $500,000. So this is rolling over that. Not utilize funds to this fiscal year. Any questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. 23 yes, zero no. Passes. Resolution 922-15, resolution appropriating and amending the 2223 Sheriff's Department budget by $8,718.18. .18. Revenues to come from rollover federal pass-through state grant funds. Proper motion from Jennifer Mason, proper second from Commissioner Sanford. Law Enforcement, Public Safety, 540 against. Budget Committee, 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Mason. Thank you. This is to roll over the unused portion of the $40,000 grant that was granted to the Sheriff's Department so that they can utilize it in this year's budget. Any questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. He got in there. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whitford. <laughs> 23 yes, zero no. Whitby, thank you for that. A combination of Sanford and Whitby there came out as Whitford. Re uh, that resolution passes. Resolution 922-16. Resolution appropriating and amending the 2223 Sheriff's Office litter budget by $1,470. Revenues to come from unappropriated county general funds. Proper motion from Commissioner Mason. Proper second from Commissioner Guffey. Law Enforcement Public Safety 540 against. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Mason. Any questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-17, resolution appropriating and amending the 2223 library budget 
by $152,726.13. Revenues to come from donations, contributions, and fines. Proper motion from Commissioner Webb. Proper second from Commissioner Sturgeon. Library Board was 840 against. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Any questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whitby. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-18, resolution appropriating and amending the 2223 Election Commission budget by $8,084.08. Revenues to come from rollover state grant funds. Proper motion from Commissioner Steve Smith, seconded by Commissioner Megan Guffey. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Smith. Any questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whitby. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-19, resolution appropriating and amending the 22-23 election commission budget by $214,600. Revenues to come from county general fund balance. Proper motion from Commissioner Steve Smith. Proper second from Commissioner Paul Webb. Budget committee 440 against. Explanation please, Commissioner Smith. Cost associated with uh, with elections in their budget, and so once we have the elections and we know what the expenses were, they come back to us with uh, a request for funding, and that's that's what this is for the for the two elections in the in the past year. Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whitby. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-20, resolution authorizing the county mayor to enter into a 22-23 contractual agreement with the state of Tennessee for local health services and increasing the 22-23 health department operations and revenues budget. Proper motion by Commissioner Steve Smith. Proper second by Commissioner Megan Guffey. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, <coughs> please, Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this resolution in the amount of 37200 for the Health Department, uh, we get uh, a number of uh, grants uh, under contract with the state. Uh, to provide services through the local health department. Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whitby. 23 yes, zero no. Passes. Resolution 922-21, resolution appropriating and amending the 22-23 health department budget by $1,475.93, revenues to come from grant funding. Proper motion from Commissioner Steve Smith, proper second from Commissioner Barb Sturgeon. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Smith. Car seats and restraint devices, 
and uh, much of this comes from uh, from fines. Uh, this resolution is one thousand four hundred seventy-five dollars ninety-three cents to recognize those state revenues. Any questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? All those in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-22, resolution appropriating and amending the 22-23 Health Department budget by $2,016.02, revenues to come from grant funding. Proper motion from Commissioner Steve Smith, seconded by Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Smith. Any questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution 922-23, resolution appropriating and amending the 22-23 Parks and Recreation Budget by $96,486.53. Revenues to come from reserves. Proper motion from Commissioner Steve Smith. Proper second from Commissioner Tunnicliffe. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Mr. Uh, these are actually funds that have come from the community youth associations, um, and they help offset the hiring of umpires and supervisors purchase of lawn products and that sort of thing um, the baseball and soccer associations you know provide that funding for the parks and rec department and then the uh, williamson county convention and visitors bureau provided seventeen thousand five hundred for the operation of the tennessee senior olympics and uh, uh, that's what this resolution involves Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. If you're opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. Yes, no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-24, resolution appropriating and amending the 22-23 assessor's budget by $8,250 for educational incentive salary supplements, revenues to come from state funds. Motion from Commissioner Smith, seconded by Commissioner Sturgeon. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Smith. Prior to this year, the state provided these incentives to qualifying employees of the assessor's office uh, as continuing education, credit, uh, money, that sort of thing. Um, they would, uh, the state would provide those funds directly to the employees. Starting this year, they are giving the money to the county, and the county has to uh, disperse the money to the qualifying employees. So that's what this is. Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. Yes, no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-25, resolution adopting the Capital Projects Fund budget for the Williamson County Adequate Facilities Tax, the Williamson County Adequate School Facilities Tax, and the Williamson County Education Impact Fee for the 22-23 fiscal year. Proper motion from Commissioner Smith, second from Commissioner Herbert. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Steve Smith.
Any questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, press your no button. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so now. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. <coughs> 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-26, resolution of the intent to fund certain county general projects totaling $22,827,694 in a 22-23 bond or note issue. Proper motion by Commissioner Steve Smith, seconded by Commissioner Barb Sturgeon. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Steve Smith. projects that have previously been approved by the county commission uh, the the funding mechanism by bond issue or note issue has gone through the uh, bond financing model and has uh, uh, has been approved through that you'll see uh, three public service or public safety projects, uh, Burwood in particular, and uh, EMS station at uh, Franklin First United Methodist Church on the bypass, um, where the church is providing a long-term lease of the property. And then the uh, Bethesda Recreation Complex Phase 3. Question from Commissioner Sanford. Commissioner Smith and maybe Bill, um, who's going to occupy the station? Is it WCRS? Uh, the new station in uh, Burwood. Question, uh, the station in Burwood. It's an emergency services station. It'll be uh, staffed by Williams County Rescue Squad, uh, EMS, and there's also room for the Sheriff's Office and all the facilities that we build going forward, with the exception of FFUMC, which will be EMS and the Rescue Squad. Okay, and I assume at Burwood, and well, maybe we haven't gotten that far, excuse my ignorance on this, are we gonna have a squad and a tanker positioned over there? And has that already been already ordered the tanker in the engine I believe for that yes Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions seeing none are we ready to vote if you're in favor press your yes button any opposed your no anyone wishing to change their vote please do so at this time record the vote please mr. Whidbey 23 yes zero no passes Resolution 922-27, resolution appropriating and amending the 22-23 capital projects budget for a pedestrian crosswalk on Hillsborough Road, State Route 106 at Grassland Elementary and Middle Schools, State Project Number 94LPLM-3S-135. By $1,281,824.63, revenues to come from grant funds, Highway Privilege Tax Funds, and Williamson County Schools. Proper motion from Commissioner Morton. Proper second from Commissioner Sturgeon. Highway Commission was 540 against. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Morton. With deep appreciation to uh, former Commissioner Lothers, uh, who went out and sought these grant funds, this will help us to provide a much-needed crosswalk at Hillsborough Road, Manley uh, Lane, and Boxwood Drive uh, there in the Grassland community. Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. Yes, no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-30, resolution of the Williamson County Board of Commissioners to clarify and amend resolution 5-22-5 appropriating up to $400,000 to the 21st District Recovery Court. Proper motion from Commissioner Webb, proper second from Commissioner Nations. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Uh, this is a correction 
for a resolution that was passed uh, prior to this. The dollar amount of 400000 come from ARPA does not change. So this is just a, a correction in the project total funding. Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Commissioner Smith, there we go. Please record the vote. Mr. Whidbey. 23 yes, zero no. Passes. <coughs> Moving on to other. Resolution 922-14, resolution authorizing the Williamson County Mayor to enter into an interlocal agreement with the participating local municipalities for joint participation in an interagency swift water rescue team. Proper motion from Commissioner Mason, proper second from Commissioner Guffey. Law enforcement public safety 540 against. Budget committee 440 against. Explanation please, Commissioner Mason. local municipalities for a joint participation for a swift water rescue team in the event that it could be needed whether here in Williamson County or surrounding areas to allow us to all work together to hopefully achieve the best possible result. Questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 9-22-28, resolution authorizing the Williamson County Mayor to execute a local agency project agreement with the State of Tennessee Department of Transportation, State Project Number 94LPLM-3S-135. Across Hillsboro Road, State Route 106 in Williamson County relative to a pedestrian crosswalk for Grassland Elementary and Grassland Middle Schools. Proper motion from Commissioner Morton, proper second from Commissioner Ricky Jones. Highway Commission 540 against, Law Enforcement 540 against, Budget Committee 440 against. Excel explanation please, Commissioner Morton. Just authorizing the County Mayor to enter into the agreements to get this done. Any questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whitby. 23 yes, zero no. Resolution passes. Resolution 922-31, resolution declaring certain election commission property and equipment surplus property and authorizing the sale of the property and equipment at auction. We have a proper motion from Commissioner Webb a proper motion from uh, second from Commissioner Steve Smith. Proper, property Committee 540 against. Budget Committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Uh, Mr. I'd like to defer to uh, Mr. Mosley about this one and the next regarding the Commission's ability to bid on surplus property. And I think the detail would be Mr. Uh, Gray, but he is not here. So maybe Mr. Mosley could have address these items that are on surplus yes. um the, the first part of the question from uh, our statement from commissioner webb property that is declared surplus by the county is sold at auction members of the county commission uh, and their immediate family are not eligible to bid on that equipment so um, you can't go out and buy a truck you see on on the second list um, at auction, you are disqualified from from bidding on that. The second part, um, it is my understanding that the equipment that is um, listed for sale on surplus on 92231 is property that the election commission had prior to the lease of equipment that was used for the last election is being declared uh, surplus and then will be sold at auction accordingly. Any questions? Commissioner Sturgeon. Yeah, just one quick question. Are these the Dominion voting machines? I don't know. I would assume so, but just because of the chronology, but I can't yeah. tell you 100%. And Commissioner Nations, did you want to speak? Oh, I'm sorry, that was 
Again, no. Commissioner Webb and nations have changed seats, so you're throwing us all off. <laughs> well, that's debatable. Any questions? No questions? Are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no button. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. Yes, zero, no. Resolution Final resolution for the evening, resolution 922-32, resolution declaring certain Williamson County owned property and equipment surplus property and authorizing the sale of the property and equipment. Proper motion from Commissioner Webb, proper second from Commissioner Ricky Jones, property committee 540 against, budget committee 440 against. Explanation, please, Commissioner Webb. Items have been declared surplus and will be and are currently some of them may be getting ready to be listed on the um, I don't see it on this, but there's an online bidding for this from uh, governmentdeals.com or something like that. But and people can go online again, as Mr. Mosley explained, commissioners and their immediate family cannot bid on these items. Any questions? Uh, I've got a question from Commissioner Lennox. I'm just curious, do we publish this to our county residents so they could take advantage of this government online auction? Publish this before it goes uh, to auction. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, are we ready to vote? If you're in favor, press your yes button. Any opposed, your no. Anyone wishing to change their vote, please do so at this time. Record the vote, please, Mr. Whidbey. Yes, no. Resolution passes. Is there any other business to come before the commission? Uh, Diane tells me that all these years we've been asking for a motion to adjourn. We didn't need to do that. So, uh, we don't vote on it. Because we don't vote on it. <laughs> so uh, we are adjourned. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to wish Diane Giddens a happy birthday oh, today. Yeah. <laughs> happy birthday, Diane. And thank you also to the sheriff and the sheriff's deputies for being here tonight. Thank you for uh, the mayor's office and staff. And thank you for each uh, one of you for your vote of confidence. Um, and this meeting is in the books. We are adjourned.